starting here with question 8. Question 8 under organic, which formula best represents an unsaturated um, organic compound? Unsaturated means that there's at least one double or triple bond. Saturated means all single bonds. So if I go here to reference table Q, my alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons, but my alkenes and my alkynes are unsaturated. They're called unsaturated because the double bond in the case of an alkene can open, and for an alkyne, I have a triple bond, so I can open up one or two bonds. So if we go back, we have the formulas here. Well, what you need to do is just notice, I just want to point this out to you, there's the general formulas here for alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So N represents the number of carbon atoms. And then for hydrogens, you would double the number of carbons plus 2 for alkanes, just double them for alkenes, or subtract 2 after you double it for alkynes. So we're looking for something that's unsaturated. Methane C1H4, that is saturated. That's methane. Choice 2, C2H4. This is a good choice because this is going to be for ethene. In fact, we can match it up. It's right here. C2H2 times 2, which is 4. Here's the molecule. It is unsaturated. There is my answer. Choice 2. If I kept going, C3H8 is an alkane. And C4H10. Again, too many hydrogens. The answer is choice 2. Let's move on to number 9. All isomers of octane must have the same. Well, we already saw this in the part 1 video that you need to know the definition for isomer. Something's the same and something's different. What's the same is the molecular formula. What's different is the structure. And the structure then changes the properties. So, what must be the same here is choice 1 molecular formula. Question 10. Which formula represents a hydrocarbon? We've seen similar questions for hydrocarbons before in part one. This is the third time now that the word or the yeah, the word hydrocarbon is mentioned. All carbons, hydrogens, nothing else. I go through my choices. The only choice it could be is choice three. Question eleven, what is the number of electrons shared between carbon atoms and a molecule of ethyne? You're not sure? Go to reference table Q. Ethyne. They even have, they're using the same one here on the table, but the Y-N-E ending tells me I have a triple bond. So here I am. Each line of the triple bond represents two electrons. So there's two, four, six. So six electrons total for the triple bond. Let's go back. So my answer, of course, is choice one. Question 12, which atom is bonded to the carbon atom in the functional group ketones? Well, functional group is ketone. You have a whole page that's one reference table. Reference table R for your functional groups. Here's ketones. Ketones have this special group amongst the hydrocarbon uh, chain of a C double bond O. So let's go back and take a look and see what the question wanted. It says, which atom is bonded to the carbon atom of the functional group? Sure enough, there it is, oxygen. Last two questions. So we're looking at a graph. It says boiling point of selected alcohols at 101.3 kilopascals, which is standard pressure. So I have temperature, and I have my alcohol. Notice what's happening is meth, eth, pro, but, pent. So we're going up by one carbon each. Let's take a look at the questions now. For question 13, what is represented by the number 1 in the IUPAC name for the three of these alcohols. The number in front gives me the position, in this case, of the OH group for alcohols that is on the molecule. So if I take a look here at which choice would be the best, and the choice that would be the best here is choice three. Now, the location of the OH group, there's also choice four. The difference is this says middle of the carbon. But that's not going to be correct here because the number one indicates it's always on the first carbon, which is going to be on an end 
of the carbon chain. So the best choice is choice three. Finally, for question 14, we're asked what can be concluded from this graph. Well, before you even look at the choices, let's go back and take a look at the graph. Temperature's going up, and the number of carbons in the carbon chain is also going up. So there's a relationship there. Now let's take a look. Uh, choice one, at 101.3 kilopascals, water has a highly higher boiling point than one butanol. Well, one butanol is here, water boils at 100, not an answer. Choice two, at 101.3 kilopascals, water has a lower boiling point than ethanol. No, ethanol is lower than 100, so again, can't be the answer. Question three, the greater number of carbon atoms per alcohol molecule, the lower the boiling point. Well, no, that can't be the answer either. It's going up. So the only answer it could be is choice four. Greater the number of carbon atoms per alcohol molecule, the higher the boiling point. That is the answer. Check out more videos. Keep working hard. If you've gotten this far and gotten through all of the videos here on multiple choice, there's always plenty to do. You can go back, go through the questions again, go through the videos again. Go through your notes, rewrite definitions, quiz yourself, make sure you know them, make sure you know your facts, work hard, and good luck.